All right, here we go. We are uh, almost almost done with this video series on getting started with video on YouTube and then optimizing, repurposing the content by turning it into a blog. I'll put all the links to all the videos in the descriptions. And so what we've done is we've already made our video. We've uploaded it into YouTube. We've added our tags and our title and our description. We custom made a thumbnail. We added our cards and our end screens. Uh, let's see, we ordered a transcript and got our transcript, transcript back from rev.com. We edited our captions. Now we've gone over and created a new blog post. We've done our title, our URL, our categories, our featured image, and we've done our schema and our Yoast optimization, okay? So now we are in the optimization process of really how do we SEO or how do we optimize for the search engines a transcript and how do we also provide a quality user experience with a transcript, okay? So, so you don't want to just smack your transcript in there. Let me hit preview so we can remember where we were at for those that might have paused and come back to this at, an, at a later date. So here's our intro, here's our video, here's our call to action and then we started our transcript, okay? If we don't do anything else, it's very ugly, right? So we don't want it to be ugly. So we're gonna break this up. Okay, so first of all, we have the intro, okay? And what I'm showing you guys is that you want to highlight any words, not, I'm not gonna tell you a standard, uh, but having a link or two per small paragraph is perfectly fine. Um, getting started with Google AdWords. So pay-per-click marketing, I have an article on Google AdWords. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that link in there. Let's see, getting, there we go. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of watching each paragraph to see where I wanna put a link to. All right, now, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna title this paragraph, generating generating, come on, leads online. Okay, now watch. I'm gonna highlight that and I'm gonna make that a heading two. And one other thing I forgot, and I'll tell you what the heading two is in just a second. I'm gonna space this down here and I'm gonna put in um, a, let's see. Mm, I'm not gonna put anything in here, okay. The reason I'm making this a heading two is for a couple reasons. Uh, in When you're designing on WordPress or many WYSIWYG style platforms, you can create paragraph headers that are various shapes and sizes, various sizes. So for example, a heading one is super large and bold and that is saved for your title. So our title is already going to have that. Our theme automatically makes it an H1 tag, so we don't want multiple H1 tags. But H2 tags, we can have as many as we want. And then you have H3 and H4. And if you're watching that paragraph change, it gets smaller. It's different, right? Well, H2 is essentially, if you look at it like an outline, and you have your H1 as your top tier, and then you do go down and make a bullet point, and there's your next item. And then you go underneath that, and you put your next items. It's kind of like that. And so most of the time I only use H1 and H2, but occasionally I'll have a reason to put another little small subcategory or some subparagraph and I'll make it an H3. Okay, we'll see if we run into that today or not. H2 is basically saying this is an important section. That tells the user it's an important section. It tells Google it's an important section, okay? So take your transcript and break it up into paragraphs just like you would if you were writing a blog post Whenever the tone changes or the topic changes or you start diving into the, another thing, change it. I mean, not change it, create a title for it, okay? All right, so I'm gonna change something here where it says I generate all of my business from the inter internet. I'm gonna change this to say I generate all of my leads from the internet. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I have a page that ranks really well on this website that's all about lead generation. So I want to link this to that page. There it is. I just saw it right here. Okay. 
So generate all my leads from the internet. Perfect. Put that link in there. So there's a couple links. Okay. Um, so let's see what else. I feel very passionate about generating leads online. You don't need to, if you've already highlighted something once and put a link to that page, you don't need to keep linking to that page. It's only going to count once the, as far as the link equity goes anyway. So unless you feel like that's a good spot that the customer might click off, and so you want to give them a link, then you don't need to keep repeating the links, okay? So I feel very passionate about generating leads online and especially for real estate. I do happen to own a marketing company called balanbrands.com. Definitely want to link that. And then there's something kind of redundant here. So let me get rid of that. So I'm really, you really want to take the time to go through this transcript and clean up all that conversational chatter and, and things that don't belong and the repeats and the ums and pauses. Okay. And we actually build real estate agent websites. Okay. So we actually build real estate websites. So now I'm going to send them to my company that built real estate agent websites. Allenbrands.com. So if I'm sending them to a link on my website, all I have to do is start typing in the keyword and search for it. But if I'm sending them off of my website, I've got to type in a URL. So that's what you're seeing here. Okay. And I'm going to right click and make sure I put in the right URL because that's very important that they're going to the right place. Yes, they are done. All right. Um, and I, I've got lots of stuff here. I've got things on WordPress, IDX driven, WordPress powered, IDX driven. Um, let me just get rid of this. Ignore. Definitely want to send them to my, I'm going to do WordPress and IDX. So IDX broker. Um, there. Okay. By instincts, I know which page to send, um, or by memory, I guess you would call it. I know which page to link these to because I know which pages on my website I set to rank for the primary keywords. If you don't know, you may have to go look through your website and see which is the best place if you've got multiple pages on a similar topic. Okay. Um, all right. We also manage your pay-per-click services and help write content. I don't know the, that one. So hold on. Battleandbrands.com slash content. Mm-hmm. Products, um, content. There it is. I have to get the URL because I don't know the URL of that one. Okay, there we go. Copy that. Go back over here. And we're going to, we also manage pay-per-click services and help you write your content for your website. Click to the services. Okay. So in this particular case, I was able to put in a call to action right in the middle there, which is cool. All right. Um, all right. Here, I'm going to put in a colored note. So watch what this does. I'm going to, this part here that I want to be highlighted like a colored note, I'm going to show you what that is. I'm going to cut that out, insert short code, and I'm going to go to note. There's a lot to learn here. Once you learn these steps, this won't be challenging, but it's going to feel a little overwhelming when you're first getting started. Okay. And then I want to highlight LoriBallon.com and then I'll show you what this note looks like. And if I went too fast, pause me, go back and rewind me and watch that again, <laughs> because I just realized I might've gone through that a little bit fast, but you're going to see me do that stuff again anyway. Okay. So then we're going to hit enter. And let's hit preview so we can see what we've done so far. So I can tell you that that blog I showed you on the last video where um, somebody was teaching in my office and I videoed and I did the transcript and then optimized the blog, it took several hours to optimize the blog because it was 10,000 or I think we got it down to 8,000 words after editing. And, um, it took me about, I, I'm, I, I think it was five hours start to finish from video upload tags, titles, captions, transcript optimization. But if you're doing this on a regular basis, it's so worth it. So worth it. All right. So here, um, here's that note we just made, see how it created that yellow background and you can do this with all kinds of colors. And what that does is if you look here on a mobile, let me. Um, I guess that's okay. 
if we look here on mobile, just stay to the left here with me, you're able to see that note popped. You know, it, 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 it's better for the eyes. And so that's why we're doing stuff like that. So we do notes and we do quotes and we do lists and bullets and all kinds of ways to break up this ugly, thick, heavy text. Okay. Um, all right. So I do have several Facebook pages and Facebook groups. So here again, I would go in and grab like what Facebook page do I want them to follow? I want them to follow my Lori Ballin speaker page. And so I'm going to grab that URL and I'm going to put that here. And then my Facebook group is Lori Ballin's Marketing um, Strategies. And I'll grab that group and put that here. Okay, and then um, I'm also going to do the same thing with my training course, and I'm going to type in here ranklikeaboss.com. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of this like all right. And my spell check, Grammarly will tell me to stop saying there is. I should be saying there are, and so that catches me. Now, what should you be doing with your real estate website? Okay, now this should be the header too. Um, let's do the overview and we'll do an H2. And then I forgot to put in the divider. So watch this. I'm gonna go up to insert short code and I'm gonna go down here to divider And the divider, all the divider does is see this little line with the words go to top. It, it puts that little break in between um, changes in subject and gives it the, the ability for the consumer to go right back up to the top. It helps the eyes. So all you're seeing is the short code, but it's going to make the line. You'll see it when we hit preview again. Okay. Um, I, for the sake of time, am not going to go through every single paragraph here, but let's just go ahead and do the, the nuts and bolts. Let's go. I'm going to highlight this divider. And I'm going to find the next spot for our line break. So here we're talking about content. Um, advertising. Buffer analytics. Okay, got it. I had to kind of get a scope for what I built here. All right, um, so content, I'll break those down. So the first one is Okay, I see this one clearly, home value estimate offers. So I'm gonna put a line break in there, or a, a divider, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna make this an H2. Okay, now, That's still home values, home values. Okay, uh, here we go, homes for sale. So I'm gonna put IDX pages, and then I'm gonna put in the divider, and I'm going to H2 this, okay? Now quotes, Let's, what you do with quotes is in these little sections, anywhere you have a divider between your H2 and your divider, you want to be using things that like quotes and those yellow notes. And you also want to put spaces in between 
a, every time there's a couple sentences that run together, put a space like this. Don't let large chunks of text pile up. So I'm going to, I'm going to put a space. You see how that works? Okay. Um, all right. So All right, so let's just say I want this part to stand out. What I do is I hover over it. Remember earlier I showed you how to do a note. Now we're going to do a quote. So you just click this little block quote up here and you can put it in quotes. And now you've got something that looks different again. Okay. So lots of those. Every time you have an H2 down to the divider, you want to have at least one of those quotes and or an image, a video, anything to break that up. And then you also want to put spaces in between double line, uh, sentence, double sentences, anything that's got two sentences back to back. And then you also want to do your internal links. Okay. Um, so here I've got, I, this says if you're paying listings to leads, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make the link and I'm going to put in uh, listings to leads and send them to my page that's all about listings to leads. Okay, you're breaking all that up. You can also add an image or a screen capture or something else. So for example, in this portion here, where I'm talking about home value estimate offers, what I could do is I can go over to my website, go to my home values page, and then I'll shrink this down so I can make the image smaller. And now I'm just going to do a screen capture. So I'm going to do Command Shift 4 on a Mac. And I'm going to draw a little box around this home value. Okay. Now I'm going to open it. And I am going to uh, adjust the size. Let me see what the size is. Okay. I'm going to make it smaller so we can just put it like in the corner. We're going to do a 640 by 480. And then I don't want this to be a ping, so I'm going to export this to my thumbnails as home value offer example. And I'm going to change that to a JPEG. Now it's only 106 kilo, kilobytes, so it's small. Um, this is going to be appropriate for websites. So I'm going to click Save. You don't want those large images because it'll kill your page load time. Okay. So I'll find a spot here where I want to add it as a sample. Okay. Um, I'll just put this one here. So I'll go to add media, upload file, select file, thumbnails, home value offer, open. And again, I can't get to my tag. So let's just do, oh, let me see if it shows up here. Hold on. I'm going to go like that, go like that. Oh, there it is. It's weird. It's getting caught up in there. Okay, alternate. Um, the alternative text is good for SEO, and this is what shows, remember, the visually impaired. This allows their screen reader to read what's on the page. So I'm going to put sample of the home valuation form requesting phone name, email, and offering an instant home value, words, read, mm, letters, spell out the words, what is your home worth now? And I'm going to click insert into post. Perfect. Okay. So this is going to break up all that heavy, chunky, chunky text like that, right? Got it. Okay. And that's telling me to get rid of the comma. This is saying, other things you can do is bold, italics, change the font color, whatever, whatever. Break that stuff up. Spend the time to do this. Spend the time to do this. It's worth it. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a preview of kind of what we did here. And honestly, you've got the you've got the idea now. We don't have to do the whole thing. You're you're inserting dividers. You're creating H2 tags. You're breaking up the chunky text. We didn't do that paragraph yet. Let's go down to this one. You're adding in quotes. You're adding in images and screen captures and um, 
and now our table of contents didn't show up yet. Hold on, I know why. So if in my WordPress theme in this particular website, we're using a uh, table of contents plus, it is a plugin for WordPress. Yes, I do have a video on how to use it and how to install it. Um, what it does is it takes your H2 tags and it creates a table of contents, but you have to have enough of them and it's based on your settings. So I think I have mine set to like four or five. So I need a couple more. So let me grab, um, let me do this one. Let's see what else is important to do tracking. Okay, perfect tracking. So we'll make, make a, um, an H2 out of this. Okay. And then I need to do, okay, let's see if I can find one more. Okay, Google Search Console. Now you'll see when you, if you find this blog completed, you'll be able to see all the things I did to it. I should include those in the video once I'm finished um, tonight or tomorrow. I'm going to spend the time doing this correctly. So now I'll click preview. Let's go ahead and look at our blog. There's our table of contents. See it? Beautiful. Beautiful. Now you got to be careful because if you, if this turns into 20 items, it, that table of contents can get really annoying. So you might want to just kind of paste and only really put the main uh, headers and then you could do heading three for the less important ones if it gets to be too long. I would say if you're going over 10 items, it might be worth making some H3s instead of H2 so that you don't have too much in your um, table of contents. We don't want the table of contents to be overwhelming at the same time. Okay. So I guess that's it. That's all we're going to cover on this. Now we did in the series, we covered the whole thing on how to take a video all the way through. Now I will tell you that um, I also use uh, social tools, Zapier and Buffer to create uh, syndication and publication that says, if I publish a post to my WordPress site, then share it to, um, then share it to, Google and to Facebook and to LinkedIn and whatnot. So I'm not having to mess with all of that on all of those channels. Okay. Uh, although I do believe in posting natively to a website, you get a larger reach. I'm not everywhere at the same time. It, you know, I can't be everywhere. So I, I allow the automation process. And also I do the same thing through YouTube. So if I publish a video to YouTube, then add to my buffer queue through Zapier. I have another video that shows you how to do this, but I just want to stress that it's important once you create the blog post, then that you also publish it, you know, send it to your email list, you know, put it on Facebook, run a Google AdWords around it. If it's worth it for you, run a Facebook ad around it. If it's worth it for you, get that traffic going as quickly as possible because you did a lot of work here. You did a lot of work. This is truly an investment of your time, energy, and potentially money, depending on how you did all this. And so you want to make sure that you're, you're taking this as far as you possibly can. All right. So that is how you follow this whole process to repurpose your YouTubes into blogs, to rank on the search engines and for social.